Uh, good evening and welcome to the uh, Village of Tucko Planning Board, uh, November 19th, 2019. Uh, Nancy, please take attendance. Commissioner Nerenberg. Present. Commissioner Barra. Present. Commissioner Forgione. Present. Commissioner Present. Chairman Leon. Present. Uh, on the agenda this evening, we have five items. One is the approval of meeting minutes held on October 15, 2019. Excuse me. Uh, item number two is one scars the old road, removing the smokestack. That has been adjourned. Uh, we don't have the report back yet from the uh, our consultant. As soon as we have that, we'll, I'm sure we'll reconvene. Uh, 20, item number three, 21 Columbus Avenue has also been adjourned. Uh, item number four, 8 Marbledale Road, which is for site plan and uh, 145 Main Street, that's a site plan as well. So at this point, I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes held on October 15th. Have a, Nancy, please take a roll. Commissioner Nirenberg. Four. Commissioner Barra. Four. Commissioner Forgione. Four. Commissioner Castellano. Four. Four. In favor. At this time, we call up uh, 145 Main Street. Did you really? <coughs> Thank you. Commissioner, members of the board, I'm Brandis, the architect for Instinct Dogs and Behavior. Uh, we also have the person who's going to be running this, Megan, who's going to give a little presentation, a uh, package that we had emailed to you, part of that, uh, that you had requested about information, how the dogs are going to be run, how people are going to sure. be brought in, how often they're going to be brought in, and she's going to give you a little rundown on that right now. Okay, and then you'll give us, you'll talk to us about the project? Okay. Hi. Hi, I'm uh, Megan Coria. I'm co-owner of Instinct Westchester. Okay. Um, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about this business and how it will be in the community. We're a dog boarding and training facility. Mm -hmm. So we help families who are having problems with their dogs or if they're going on vacation and they want their dog to pick up some new behaviors. Um, or if they got a puppy and suddenly they have to house train the puppy and it feels very overwhelming to them which happens sometimes, um, we help families with that um, as well. Um, one part of the instinct model is having a veterinary behaviorist working out of the facility, their own separate business, but it's in our facility, um, and we share clients and information between each other. Um, we have some veterinary behaviorists here today. There are only about 75 of them in the whole country, so I'm surprised they let two of them be in the same room together. <laughs> um, and that's um, a really nice resource for a community to have. Uh, we will be creating jobs and growth opportunities for our employees that we hope to hire locally. 
And also, one thing that we offer communities is free educational um, programs for dog owners, including monthly seminars that are free and open to the public, mm -hmm. uh, puppy classes that are also free, uh, where the dogs learn how to socialize and do sort of the basic obedience um, behaviors. And then for clients who participate in our board and train programs, we offer free uh, canine good citizen classes. Okay. which is an AKC program. It goes monthly as well? Yeah, it depends on the number of alumni who are interested, but yeah, every four to six weeks, right. we offer those on uh, evenings and weekends. Okay. I know that traffic is a concern on Main Street, so most of my slides are about traffic. Okay. <laughs> um, we will have six employees on site at the busiest times, and that's a lot less than PTI had, because they had 35 employees. I just found out from Oliver. Uh, we plan to rent spaces from Shiloh Baptist Church, and I spoke to Reverend Gerald about that, and he says that he has the number that we need. We can rent six spaces from him. Uh, just to kind of forewarn you, he doesn't have a parking lot license. Oh, he so said he, there was a... So my understanding is he doesn't have a parking lot license, so he needs to get one before he can acquire anything. Okay. All right, so uh, he may be renting spaces, but unfortunately, he may not have a, a parking lot license, so he's going to have to deal with that. And once he does that, you will need to get a lease right. uh, for a number of parking spaces submitted as part of your application, and then we'll go from there. All right, sounds good. Okay. Um, we are going to reserve the parking that is on the facility site, mm -hmm. the little lot in front of the building, for our clients doing pickups and drop-offs and lessons. And there should never be more than four clients there at a time. And it's hard to imagine a time when there would be that many clients on site um, during business hours, um, mostly because we schedule pickups and drop-offs so that we don't have a whole bunch of dogs like rushing up to the to the gates to come in. Mm -hmm. So um, Instinct uses Calendly to schedule dogs so that they're they're spaced out. And once the spot is taken, they can't they they have to take like a different time. Um, so if I board my my dog, right. if I had a dog. Yeah. Um, then if I wanted to pick him up for argument at any time, let's say I'm back from work early, I'd have to still uh, go into your app and select the time to pick up, or can I just knock on your door and pick up my dog? Well, you, sir, could just call the front desk and see what it Well, like not me. Like. I mean, let's say, let's say, da <laughs> let's, let's say, Miss So sometimes Dave. plans change, um, and but clients, with this kind of business, we're always in touch with clients. They want to know how their dogs are doing. They know how to contact us, and we, so they usually will let us know if they're running late or early. No one's ever running early, usually, with this kind of thing, but if they're running <laughs> okay. late, um, and we always try to try our best to work it out. Um, but we only schedule one pick up and drop off at okay. a time. So even if there's some overlap, hopefully it's not all four people suddenly showing up at the same time. Right, day. right. Okay. The, the, um, with the board and train and the puppy raising programs, which are sort of the main part of the business, um, it, 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 at Instinct in East Harlem, on their very busiest day, which is in the summertime, uh, they had an average of six pickups and drop offs per day. Some of those are in the morning, some of them at night. Okay. Okay. Um, the other program that is a little bit new to Instinct and that we hope to be starting off launching with when we open is day school. And for that, we'll have an estimated 10 dogs. Um, the dogs will be arriving over about three hours in the morning, probably between about 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Um, and then the, those dogs will be going home in the evening, probably between about 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Is that the maximum number you'll have, or you can potentially have more? We could potentially have more, but that's what we would sort of start with, and that's our estimate for what for the interest that we'll have in that program here. Do you have a maximum number that you, I mean, I guess as part of, just to forewarn you, as part of the condition of approval, eventually we'll say, okay, you can board more than X number of, of dogs. So. I want to make sure you understand, let's say, if, it, if you eventually will get to, let's say, 15, for argument's sake, right, you should probably put down 15, or ultimately your, your ultimate goal, basically. That's what I'm trying to advise you. Okay. All right. Can I think on that? No, no. Uh, December and tell you. Like, yes, of course, because we're not doing anything tonight because, again, we have an issue with the Shiloh Baptist Church. All right. So this is kind of a, just an open discussion. Okay. All right. 
Um, and I also expect that with day school, that that will be a more really truly more locally local interest in that, mm -hmm. um, because it is twice a week and and they have to do a lesson with us with the owners too. So um, I suspect we might have dogs being walked in. There'll, there'll be pedestrian dogs, and then their owners will walk right over to the train station. Okay. Um, the additional programs that we offer, like community workshops and the canine good citizen classes, uh, th those are, uh, for the community workshops are 10 to 20 people usually. It's humans only, uh, not dogs. Um, again, we might be drawing locally there, so some people might walk in for those. Some people could actually take the train in. Right. Are sure. those weekdays or weekends? Weekends and evenings. Okay. Yeah. We have to make those convenient for humans yes, right. to get to. And it's the same with the canine good citizen classes. Those are usually five or six dogs per class. Weekends and evenings. Weekends and evenings. And Len mentioned to me um, that there might be concerns about cleanliness or trash removal. So I called a couple trash removal companies and sort of, uh, and I think that what we'll end up doing is using a, a one yard um, cart for rubbish with once weekly pickup. Um, and they might be, have a separate container, 96 gallons for recycling, because we will recycle, because it's really important to us. Right. Will that be outside uh, in your parking lot area? Um, that container, the one yard container? Uh, yes, we have an area where we have the one yard container on that site plan. Yeah. What do you have? Oh, I see it, okay. It's about a loading dock? You're not using that, that shed area for anything else, right? This, this, this shed? Yeah. Uh, that shed area, that's the, that would be, uh, we're closing that in, and that's going to be where dogs can go out and run around and around. Uh, right. No, because you have a new 10-foot-high uh, gate. What's the purpose of the gate? The gate over here? Yeah. Uh, that is to close it. It's right now it's open. Half of it's open, half of it's closed. Right. The okay. Oh, so you're going to keep it, uh, is it, is it an open gate or right a closed now, gate? Well, right now it's, uh, it's open right now. Okay. So it's, it's a solid gate? So I'm trying to figure out. Uh, it's a solid wood area. Okay. It's, we're going to actually put openings in these areas, but we're going to basically put another solid wood so it matches the existing gate. That's okay. Right. Thank you. Um, I know some people worry about smells inside dog facilities, um, but I, I have run a facility in Manhattan myself, and I'm also going to be using the instinct sort of cleaning protocols and neither my facility nor Instinct East Harlem nor Instinct in Englewood smells bad at all. Um, and I think that's mostly because all waste is immediately contained and the area is disinfected and wiped down. And then there's also daily disinfection protocols. Um, and then we also have um, custom UVAIR air scrubbing system, which is what they use in um, the air shuttles with NASA when astronauts are like up in space for so long. Um, they've sort of commercialized those units and you can put them in your dog daycare now. Got it. So that helps. So what would the, the waste itself, is that disposed, how is that disposed? Um, all waste is picked up in a bag and it's disposed, it'll be in a big black trash bag and then those will be in the one yard container outside. Each so, day. so the one yard container is primarily for, uh, for waste? It's, it's for all the waste of the facility. So including there might be dog waste. And that's what I'm saying, Inclu including dog waste? Including dog waste. And, and, and you pick up once a week? I could do it more often. When I talked with volume. Um, I'm not concerned about volume, just having waste there for a, a, a week. I'm not sure how, you know, uh, it's going to rest there for a week, especially in the summertime, you know, right. flies and... Well, we could also go with the Village of Tuckahoe pickup, which then we get, like, twice weekly pickups plus the... the uh, yeah, I, th I think you need to kind of look at that a little closer. I think it's it should be picked up more frequently, especially especially waste. Okay. Yeah, especially going to keep it outside. It's... Uh, yeah, we, well, we definitely don't want... It's right by our entrance, so we certainly... I know, but you have, na you have a house yeah. behind you, so we want to be good neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. You have a park next door. Of course, next door. Yeah, so just think about that. Okay. Yeah. Well, just on a side note, uh, what would be the maximum amount of dogs at any given time? Uh, so we're looking at having 68 um, kennels for the dogs, so that would be the maximum number of dogs at a time. There's usually, uh, in our busy season, we will have between 20 and 30 board and trains with us. 
Um, and then there's always a certain number of puppy raising puppies um, that have to have a space, but they actually go home with the trainers. So they're there during when the trainer is working, but they're at the trainer's home when the trainer is not working. Um, so given that amount, uh, yeah. the issue of waste should be discussed further and okay. the volume of it. Uh, sure. Maybe it's a two, twice a week pickup, but we'll talk more about that. So, so can you kind of describe how the 68 dogs, uh, what's the makeup of that? In other words, how many being trained, how many being boarded? So just get a sense of how the facility runs with that many animals, dogs? Uh, sure. So the, the dogs are, uh, they're on an itinerary so that it's not, it is not complete chaos inside. Um, every dog gets four, like, visits to the potty yard or free time to like stretch their legs every day um, every dog gets training hours um, every day um, the, they get group play for the dogs who can handle group play where they play in groups of like two or three or four dogs together but that's all like sort of detailed out and scheduled so that um, our spaces aren't having it, like craziness happening between dogs like coming in and out um, uh, I guess, what I guess what I'm trying to figure yeah. out is you got, if you have 68 dogs in a facility, right? right. Um, so they're being picked up and dropped off, I would imagine, daily. Some, some will be boarded for a week or if someone went on vacation. Or, so I'm trying to figure out what kind of volume we'll have on a daily basis. All right, because let's say you're, you're training puppies and it goes on with a, a trainer, right? That's one trainer, one puppy. So if, Again, I'm just trying to figure out what the, how, how you, you have you could potentially have 68 uh, dogs, right? Right. How does your how, do, how does that work? What percentage or what? Uh, uh, again, I'm just trying to figure out how the facility is going to work with 68 people because of 68 uh, uh, dogs. So is that going to be 68 uh, um, dedicated visits to the facility, or is it going to be 40? Okay. It, okay. <laughs> just stored. <laughs> Um, so all of the dogs who are in our care right. are going to get the utmost love and care. And you attention. seem like a wonderful person, and <laughs> I believe you, and I and I think you're you know you're you're going to be wonderful with these animals. Again, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out is I guess the the traffic impact to the facility because you're going to have again potentially 68 or let's say 60 unique trips. Is it going to be on a daily basis? Is it going to be 40 maximum? Again, I'm just trying to figure out how many what people will be coming. So in yeah. a facility, East Harlem has 40 kennels, and okay. I I we hope to have more than that. We have a lot more space than East right. Harlem. Okay. Does. Um, and with those. 40 kennels operating at maximum capacity in their busy season, they had six pickups and drop-offs per day on average. So the staff are coming in and there's six to eight staff possibly on like the very busiest time that's canine care team and training team working with the dogs. But the clients coming in and out are much less frequent. Dogs who are doing board and train, they have to stay with us for two, three, sometimes four weeks because right because of the behaviors that they're learning and to also peop the length of people's vacations. Like we try to make it work for, for everyone, but some, the, they, they're not. It's long-term boarding basically sounds like, or is it like, daily? for example, if I'm going to, an, to a meeting in the city and, and I need to board my dog, do I come to you for, just for the day program? How, again, I'm just trying to figure out how your facility works. And again, I'm really trying to figure out what the impact is on, you know, on that section of uh, Main Street. Right. Um, So if there's, t I guess, if 30 of the dogs of, the, of this, let's say 60 spots are, are, are board and trained, right. and then I have my 10 day schools um, that I'm hoping to have, yeah, I, sure. I guess uh, um, we would have space left over for 20 sort of regular boarding dogs who are maybe weekend dogs or a shorter term, or they're not doing a special training program. So, so but, you, but you're saying that not more than six people in the six... Uh, Unique visits on a daily basis uh, for sixty-eight dogs. Is that what I'm? Well, for the board and train and puppy raising, yes. And then the day school, if it, that those dogs come in every morning and go home every night. All right, so that's about ten. I'm sorry, that's only ten. And that's that. Sixteen. Sixteen. Well, so, if you have six dogs that are coming in and out on a regular basis. 
But the training sessions, it's not just a training for a day training. They're going training for at least a week or two weeks at a time. That part I understand, right. So the, most of the people are going to be going, the maybe six dogs are changing on a daily basis, plus the, da plus the, plus the daily dogs, plus the 10-day dogs, so 16. So you're looking at 16 potential transactions on a daily basis. And do the owners stay a duration of time to, to learn how to train their dog? So, yeah, so, so the, it's, they have weekly lessons. Um, with the day, the day school dogs, they do monthly lessons with them. So they do four weeks of day school, and then the owner stays for a 30-minute lesson. Um, so if you do Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, you can either schedule your you know, Thursday night when you pick up your dog to do your monthly half-hour lesson, or you can schedule it for a different time. And then the, the board and trains, they do weekly lessons. They don't always have weekly lessons because if the owner is literally away from the country or you know not around, then I, we don't make them come back to do a one hour lesson, but they get a one hour lesson per week. Okay. So when I come for the daily lesson, right, I, I'm, I'm gonna park my car in your parking lot and, and take up, let's say 30 minutes, right? So. Um, that, and that's the part where you have that 30 minutes or 45 minutes scheduled in your, in your app? Is that what we're talking about? The, the, the lesson is scheduled in the app. <coughs> like that's scheduled at a time with the trainer and right. then there are parking times. The parking times are 10 to 15 <coughs> minutes. So you might be in, you boarded your dog with us for a week or two weeks and then they're, they're doing the lesson. Um, so your car is there in front of our space <coughs> for an hour, but in that hour a dog came got dropped off and the person drove away and another person came in and dropped their dog off <coughs> and went away. Right. So you're not going to have multiple training sessions uh, uh, simultaneously for argument's sake? It, it's possible that that would happen. It's more likely to happen on a weekend. Okay. Well, the reason I'm asking all these questions is you have Orange there right across the street from you. Yes. And uh, I just know that they're very parking uh, when the classes change. There is no parking. There's, there's challenges there. Um, so. Again, I just want to—I just want to make sure that it's going to be adequate parking for everybody, and you know, to to be good neighbors. Um, all right. So again, I'm just trying to understand your business and how it works. And maybe one other metric that would like help help um, understand is that we'll, we're planning to start off with two, but have three full-time trainers working with us. Mm -hmm. So. <coughs> Excuse me. Technically, all three of my trainers could be offering. We won't let that happen. Actually, we we will we will manage the scheduling so that I don't have all three of my trainers offering hour long sessions simultaneously. Right. I mean, you're gonna that have, wouldn't you're gonna have to work for the it. facility either inside. Okay. Because they there's a few spaces that Lynn will show you that are like the big rooms where those lessons can right. happen. So. Right again, I'm just more worried about parking because I, I, you have Orange Theory there, and I think it, I think there's a, I want to say 24 uh, spots, uh, and I know that there's like a, a 10, 15 minute period where they, where they, the classes change, and then they're an hour long, uh, and there's really uh, no parking. And I know they have like 10 parking spaces behind the building, and then the other 14 are Orange Street parking, and it's always a challenge to get uh, parking spaces. So. Uh, again, it seems like a little bit of what you're doing may spill over into the street. So uh, again, I'm just trying to balance all these things. I guess we're trying to do that. Okay. Uh, one thing also I'd like to mention is that the daily dogs, these are not people who can bring their dog every day for a drop off. Uh, this is only a few days a two week. Two days. Two days a week maximum that a person can bring their dog. So we're not looking for somebody to drop their da dog off, go to work, and come back on a daily basis. So this is just this is really more for training. This is, as I said, this is more of a training facility than just a boarding facility. Okay. That's, you know, something that's important. Even the daily dogs are being treated the same way. Okay. So I think that's important to know. All right. Anything else you'd like to say? Uh, well, I was a, I was not talking to you. I was talking to Karen. <laughs> No, I, I think I said everything. That Thank you. Because right. right. he likes yeah. to hog the mic. I know. Yeah. I know. yeah. <laughs> All right, Mr. I, I know there was questions as to what we have. The uh, what I'd like you to do is uh, um, uh, explain the project so that people at home can understand the project. I know we you've yep. presented to us. Please present yep. to the village. So yes. start. I'd like to present the project. Thank you. And just start with what the building is and what was there before. Uh, it was an industrial building where it was manufacturing going on, and as we just found out, that there were actually up to 35 people operating within that building. Uh, so we are certainly reducing 
how much traffic is in the building, how many people are being used there. In terms of dogs, it's not as much running around. <laughs> okay. But we are reducing the number of people and the number of cars that need to be parked in the area. Uh, the facility itself lends itself to what we need because it is a, a masonry building. The majority of the dogs are going to be kept actually in the lower level, in the basement and lower levels, as opposed to the pedestrian areas where in the, where close to the residential area we only have the top floor is over there and that's in the area where we have our behaviorist working with the dogs we don't have the dogs barking and things like that most of the storage areas that's on south high street. yes that's south high street on the corner and main street is where the the truck is there just, yes. just so people at home could main street, when high street, high street. Where, where this building actually goes up there's only one story at this point which is the second floor level mm -hmm. okay and the second floor level is the area where we do have more of the the dog behaviorist is up there. We're not doing so much uh, storage up there, the, you know, the boarding of the animals, but we are going to be training the animals up in that area. So it's not going to be a high occupancy area. Okay, and Lenny, on the, just on your site plan, on the right side is the park, right, at the intersection? Uh, right here is the park. Okay. And those are the Over here, this is basketball. This is the building right here on the corner. Mm -hmm. There's the residence up here. This is the one-story area up here. It's right. down to two stories, and the basement area below this area over here. Okay. And the dogs, the majority of the boarding area is going to be in the basement area underneath this area. So it's not near the residential. Certainly it's not going to be a noise issue in terms of dogs barking. And we do have ventilation systems as we discussed. So this is going to be ventilation. There are windows actually in the side of the building in the basement area. So we'll be able to have that properly ventilated and taken care of. Okay, great. The, so the basement area is right here where we have a large amount of the boarding areas over here. And so this is not the training areas over here. We are have mechanical areas that are existing in the building. We are going to be able to keep the area clean. I have the air, the uh, UV air X system, filtration systems built in, exhaust fans also built into the area over here. On the first floor, we have the flex board, where we also have the personal dog care, which is where the puppies are going to be trained. So that's in the front of the building up here, and the doggy interaction playroom area up here. This is where they're going to have the two or three dogs learning to get to know each other, being able to work with each other. This is all the training sections over here. Uh, in the area up here, which is where we come in at the building, where the areas we're going to have this area, we're going to close this area off so that it does match the rest of the building and have the dogs be able to come outside and have a little free time outside. Once again, it's only going to be a few dogs at a time be going outside with the door, so it's going directly from the building into the area so it doesn't come spilling out into the parking lot. That area stays clear for people only. And then on the third, on the third level, which is the top floor over here, uh, this is basically where we have the trainers, additional dog training up here, and the behaviorist and training areas over here. So once again, the main training areas over here are going to be maintained. On the first floor, we're just going to be having some of the play areas over here. We are adding one dog wash because after the dog's been there for a couple of weeks, you do want to give them a bath after a while before you give them back to the owner. So, but we're not grooming dogs. That's not what we're doing. We're here just to train these dogs as much as possible. Uh, the question that come about the parking, and which is the additional material I gave you, is that we do have at least three easy park walks coming in here. I mean, they've had as many as uh, six cars parked in here. We're looking at three to four people parking here at a time, and there's certainly enough room for cars to back up and go out the existing entrances. This is, we're not adding any curb cuts to the space. This is all existing spaces. Lenny, uh, question for you. Uh, and which one of those are going to be the handicap one? A handicap will end up being this one over here by the entry. Okay. And that's why we have that big space over there showing the entry with the stripe. I'll, I'll indicate that handicap if you want that more. I, and uh, one, one fast question. Is the building sprinklered by any chance? Building sprinklered? I do not believe so. Okay. Because we're going with three levels of occupied space now, right? It's what it's it was before. It's no. pre-existing that way as a uh, know, manufacturing F1 series before as a factory. Right. We just got to make sure that it's yes. change of use and it meets <coughs> complies. That's all. Yes. So I have a, a question. So you, you have the ventilation system, the uh, filtration system down in the basement. Uh, where does that vent to? It recycles and vents. It can vent to the exterior. There's windows out here. So is, 
All right, so um, the air that's being that's vented. All filtered, all filtered. All right, so we're not going to have any odors no. spilling onto the park? No, this is all cycled air. It's all through filtration systems, through charcoal systems. And is there a maintenance program? In other words, is there is somebody comes in and maintains it, or is this something up to the uh, um, owner to change the filters? It's up to the owner to maintain the filter system. All right. And the other question that I have is, so you're gonna, you, you said you, you had, you're going to have six um, uh, trainers. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We're going to start with um, two and then move up to three full-time trainers. So how many staff will be on site? In other words, you're going to have a manager, a receptionist. Uh, so, right. so I think that we would probably have six on site at the most at um, at the same time. We don't try to schedule all of our trainers on site at once, and okay. all of our trainers get you know evenings and two days off a week, which that might sound crazy, but trainers really appreciate that. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, the there's if there's two two trainers on staff, but then we have our receptionist who will be there um, all the time. Okay. Always. Um, Nine and to then five. we have canine care staff that, and they do like sort of the basics of cleaning, feeding, uh, and taking care of the dogs. And uh, some of the canine care staff also work with the day school. How many uh, canine care staff will you have at uh, any one time? Um, we could do up to three. Then that would be okay. An so easy day. all right. So those yeah. they'll go in and clean the kennels and play with the dogs and whatever else, right? Yeah, they, they oh, yeah, do yeah, a lot yeah. of chopping up of treats and stuff, and okay. they can assist with the day school dogs. And um, they also, someone's always there. It's, it is 24 hours, so oh, okay. someone spends the night. Someone spends the night there. And you, what time does your facility close? We're, we're by appointment only, so if someone is running super late and they want to get their dog at 10 o'clock and they've called ahead and, you know, let us know they're running late, right. they can do that because someone is there right. who so, knows the But dog. typically, what were your uh, operational hours? I would say we're we're busiest between the the trainers are in there between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. So you put doing so their board and train dogs and then right. doing so if they have nighttime lessons with with owners. So I, I so I guess I'm trying to find out. So your hours of operations are going to be 10 to 8. I would imagine no. So day school dogs were there. Someone's there 20. I, I understand all of that. The day school dogs right. do they come in when the Owners need to drop them off so they can get to work on time. So we'll have. So staff. let's say most people go to work between seven and eight. So right. those so dogs come in early. All right. Um, but they're going to, you know, be taken in and they move into um, kennels okay. where they wait for their enrichment sessions and play right. time. But there's a transaction taking place at that point, right? In other words, someone's g g greeting the person at the at the door and taking the dog, signing him in, and all that good stuff. So that takes a few minutes to do that, right? So I guess the point I'm trying to make is your facility. Let's generally starts between let's say seven and maybe the last dog pick up let's say most people get home at seven and say eight o'clock is that fair to say yeah. i understand you're going to have you know a, a staff someone on st a staff there or on site 24 hours a day i understand that but primarily your, your business hours are going to let's say be seven to eight is that fair to say that sounds fair okay just trying to understand okay anybody else have any questions no i think you um, so, um, what what's the variety of dogs? Are these um, like Rottweilers, small dogs, big dogs? Um, we work with family dogs, so whatever kind of dogs that people get to live in their homes with them and that they need help with, we'll take those those dogs. Yeah. And and have you had any um, situations where dogs have gotten loose? ran around the facility or outside of the facility there are a lot of <coughs> um, safety measures in place to keep dogs um, contained and separated and getting the the exact treatment that each dog needs because um, some of the dogs do have fears of other dogs so we you know you can ask Len. We're like, we need ten feet of aisles between the, you know, kennels, so that the dogs can way walk walk um, around. Um, I'm not saying that there's never human error, but I, I have never had a crazy dog loose in the facility ravaging anybody. 
have you escaping I guess he's asking, does that no. your dog escaping? So one of the because protocols of the that we teach clients is to have two um, me methods for con um, holding on to your dog. So um, two pieces of equipment that are, you know, so that if one of them fails, that you still have the second one. And we also do that. We don't just tell our clients to do it. We actually do it with the dogs. The dogs won't be going out of the facility unless they're with a certified dog trainer. Okay. The canine care staff don't take the dogs out of the facility. Only certified trainers, and only when they're working on something that needs to be done out in, in public, like walking nicely on the sidewalk. Or okay. So, so in other words, yes. You, so you'll be able to take, I guess, dogs out and I guess uh, teach them how to walk on a sidewalk or. It depends on what they need to do. When I was visiting at Englewood, I met a dog who had like a terrible phobia of manhole covers. Like if she saw a manhole cover, really? she had to walk like 10 feet around it, which is not an easy thing to do in New York City. So she was in Englewood, New Jersey, like learning to love the manhole covers. Like cool. Chicken, 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 manhole covers. Isn't that, <laughs> is that how it works, chicken, huh? Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> New association. Gotcha. OK. Right. I don't know what her old association was. Explosion Maybe in she Manhattan. Saw the movie It or something. Yeah. Manhole explosion in Manhattan, perhaps. I Maybe. don't know. She watches too much news. Exactly. All right. Is there anything else you want to share with us? I'd actually just like to mention that she mentioned that uh, the facilities we could stack a lot more animals here if we needed to for boarding, but their rules and regulations with this particular company, because this is a, a national company, they must have that ten foot border so that the dogs are not right on top of each other. So they do control the dogs. Most facilities do not have that. There's no, no regulations like that. And that's why we have all this space around. We're not crowding in the dogs. This is dogs that are being comfortably kept you know, with each other. So there's not going to be those type of issues. We're not training dogs here for killer dogs or police dogs or bomb dogs. These are dogs for homes for people to use. So that's, it's try to keep the dogs calm and tame is really what we're talking about. Gotcha. OK. Thank you for the 10 foot aisles, by the way. He would have probably put more kennels in there, <laughs> knowing him. All right, so uh, you have some homework to do. Uh, so talk to the Shiloh Baptist Church. I'm not sure what the procedure is for getting a, a parking lot license. All right, so, uh, and that's gonna be critical. Yeah. I know we had spoken to Bill Williams about it. He didn't think it was an issue. He just has to get them to come in. They're going to have to come in and, yes, and then you're going to have to have a lease and then. Yes, that we will take care of. Cool. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you and hope to see you next month. All right. Thank Good night, guys. Oh, okay. So at this uh, point, I'd like to make a motion to open the public hearing. Can I have a second, please? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anyone here this evening to speak on this application? Since there isn't. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on in. Give us your name and uh, your address. So Oliver Stauffer. Uh, I'm a resident of Tuckahoe, One Scarsdale Road, but okay. also owner of 145 Main Street. Okay. So to the chairman and the board, thanks for allowing me to speak. Um, it, I, I do just want to shed a little color on what that building was, where it came from, and why I think it, this is actually one of the better uses for it today. So it has been an industrial property for over 100 years. The founder of Vitamins. Uh, began his business there at 145 Main Street. It went on to be what I would call a sweatshop factory for about 40 years. And But actually many people here in Tuckahoe did find employment there. I don't know what their maximum capacity was during that time. But last year when PTI was still operating there, we were actually above 35 employees. Mm. And so that gave you a little bit of color as to what where did those 35 uh, employees park, by the way? Just curious. That's a great question. So uh, many of them found parking in the street. We also uh, leased about eight spots across the street underground. Underground where? Uh, with uh, the Morale oh, Properties. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. So uh, it was very kind of him to, to offer that. And we had quite a good partnership there as well. And uh, many employees found parking in the streets, mm. okay? Uh, only about six or seven employees actually took the train into Tuckahoe. The a relationship with Shiloh Baptist Church was, uh, I think, one of uh, a little bit less formal. You know, we sort of thought of it, it's nice to have God on our side. I don't think the board would, would object to that. And so we had a relationship where we donated money to the church every Thanksgiving. We uh, offered a lot of uh, turkeys and 
food to their uh, meal drive that occurs. Mm -hmm. They have a nice meal the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Yep. So we had a relationship <coughs> with them, yep. and they allowed us to park there during the week. And so that was about 10 people that would park there and walk right. around the park. So that's how we operated. But one thing that I think is going to uh, really be a difference, a year ago what you would have, have seen is every morning the FedEx truck and the UPS truck would drop off. They would be parked on, on Main Street. They would not pull in. Every evening, they would park there, picking up and dropping off. And during the day, we would have palleted shipments being picked up. We have a forklift at 145 Main Street that's no longer there. So we had large shipments coming in and leaving, aside from the 35 employees that were there. So this is a huge shift for that property. I think it's a shift that makes this, this property really right for, for Tuckahoe. On the second floor right now, there are 24 cubicle spots. And I certainly think that that's not uh, the use that we hope to have for 145 Main Street. So I think that reducing the headcount that's inside that property but giving it value to Tuckahoe, I think, is certainly something that uh, would be of value to the Tuckahoe community. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? So at this uh, time, I guess we'll keep the public uh, um, uh, public meeting open. So at this time, make a motion to keep the public meeting open. Have a second. Second. One favor. All right. So do I have to close it now as well? Or no? Okay. All right. So we'll see you, I guess, hopefully next month. Thank you. Is eight marble there? Marble there here? That's you. Oh. Lizzie, I'm from Station Glow of New England. We are the um, people that applied for the permit application for eight Marble Dale. Okay. It's Marble Dale. Marble Dale. Okay. I keep calling it Maple Dale, and they keep correcting me. <laughs> okay. So, um, it's currently. So, li Lizzie, who do you represent? I'm sorry. Station Glow of New England. We're the image contractors. Oh, the image contractors. So we're okay. the ones that would be doing the work essentially if everything is approved. So you would be rebranding the actual canopy itself. Yeah. Uh, in other words. Yes, it's okay. well. We'd be putting the image on the canopy. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure if it was white for a reason because of your codes. Um, I didn't see anything in the ordinance that said it had to remain white. So I'm not sure if they just didn't, when they installed the canopy, they just didn't put an image on. Maybe it wasn't mobile. Or maybe it was a different. Uh, it could have just been a different brand. one at the time. They just right. painted it white. I didn't see anything in the ordinance that right. said that it needed to remain white. Did you call the building department just to get clarification? I pulled the ordinance up on the website right. and reviewed it that way but okay. i didn't call mike do, do you know if we have any sort of restrictions against signage on uh, um gas stations put make sure the mic is on please no matter what the property is i believe don't quote me 100 percent. you can't have more than one or two signs so maybe they weren't able to have the mobile on the corner and the mobile on the thing so maybe they were considering and the mobile at color. the yeah Right. And I know I know some municipalities also have a, a limited square footage uh, uh -huh. on signage, so yeah, I'm not sure if we had that as well. About the signage, but I wasn't sure because the canopy right now is currently all white, right. and we're proposing two thirds blue, one thirds white. Okay. I didn't see anything about color per se in the. No, the color's up to them. Codes. Oh, okay. I just saw that the the signage, like you mentioned, but I didn't know if they, the board or if the town considered more color signage or just. Color. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we need to do some research on that just to figure out exactly what's allowed. And the second question I have is, does this have to go to sign an, an awning board? It does have to go to sign uh, an awning. There's a proposed, I just looked at it fast, there's a proposed LED lighting? Yes. Okay, that's not allowed according to our code either. Around the canopy? Or the, the pricer? I think it's the, the pricer, pricer, right? Yeah. Okay, so it can only remain the font. Uh, you have the it on a canopy manual. Well. I didn't, this is my first time. We're, um, we're proposing an LED light strip that hangs down three inches from the top of the canopy to illuminate just the canopy fascia, as well as the two-thirds blue strip. All right, wh why don't we start this? Let's just start again and okay. let's walk us through the project. And you're going to have to put some, some images on you know, that easel so that people at home can also follow along. Do you have anything? That's an 8 by 10 though. That's fine. Let's put it up. And you have some clips if you want to just hang it on a clips as well. Some echo clips up there. So yeah. Um, so 
Yeah, take that with you. Thank you. So to the upper left and upper right, there's some echo clips. I don't know if you want to hang some stuff. So we'll start with the canopy then. Currently, it has two canopies on the property. There's the building and then the two fueling station canopies. Right now, they're both white. We're proposing to have the, like I said, the two-thirds blue, one-thirds white, with each canopy having one mobile logo on each end of the street. Also, there would be what they consider, what mobile calls a 2DI, or an actual light bar that hangs down basically say this is the top of the canopy, it hangs down three inches to illuminate only the canopy fascia. There's no lighting shining onto the actual parking lot itself. It's at the upper section of the uh, canopy? It's on the upper section, yeah. It hangs okay. down about three inches. Okay. But like I said, I looked in your ordinance. I didn't see anything about the color per se, so I wasn't sure why the canopies were still white unless that right. was something that... So let me ask you a question. Wall. So I'm looking at your, your image here, right? Mm -hmm. And I see the uh, on the upper left, you have the mobile and you have the uh, the blue band. Yeah. But I don't see exactly where you're placing the uh, three inch uh, light bar above the uh, the sign itself. Is it above it's, the sign? It's not above the sign. It's only on the blue. It's only on the blue. So only it's not on the blue. It's not represented here on your. Uh, so the it horizontal line is not really. Really draw it on there. No, just to have a horizontal line so that there is a. Yeah, no, there's there's nothing represented and, on the drawing. And that light bar will be blue as well. Yes. Okay. It's an. Et the best way to explain it is, you know, the, the rope lighting? Yeah. That's what it looks like. The strip and it's LED? Protected, yeah. Okay. And it's protected with a piece of blue plastic so that you can't see it when you're driving down. You only see the illumination behind it. Okay. All right, so, so you're looking to add the, uh, the light bar, basically, and the branding to the existing uh, canopy? The existing canopy, yes. Got it. Okay. So that I understand. Okay. So then you also have a, um, we, I guess you have pylons here, right? All right, so then you have the the, the mobile, yes, LED, and Mike is saying that we do not allow LED, correct? So you only allow the manual font pricer that right. they have to change with the suction cup. They can go and request that sign to go in front of the sign and awning board and see if they'll allow it, but the code doesn't allow it right now. That would be a denial, and they'd have to give a variance based on that. And the so do they go? Board do they have to go to signing board first? Or, or well, they, oh, they, oh, they got to strike it from you because you can't approve it the way it is right Correct, now. right. So I would have to go to them, then come back to you guys for this. For that, yeah, that's what it sounds like. If, if you want to maintain your LED uh, Yeah, that, that's the whole purpose of this. Correct, right, okay. But, so I can, but I, let me, before we even go there, let me get clarification from Bill Williams to make sure, you know, the process as to why you're in front of them other than the canopy being done. And then right. we can go from there as to the signage. Uh, the planning board doesn't really look at the signage. That's a sign and awning board. Okay. So if that's te technically, I believe it to be a sign, that right. would be mm -hmm. the sign and awning board. The canopy and the lighting of the canopy would be them because there's no signage, but now you're putting signage on that canopy from okay. what I'm gathering. Okay. So you gotta go to both boards. Okay. Um, right. But again, getting back to the LED lighting, we don't allow LED lighting. And I'm looking at some pictures of like even the rope lighting that you're putting around the canopy from what mm -hmm. I'm gathering they can look at that um, and give its own clarification on that. I need to look at the code with Bill and see if you can even have rope lighting like that. Even around. though it's shielded. It's shielded, but you're going to see it. So well, it's going to cast a kind of it's a, a, a light. It's going to cast uh, a, a hue on the, on yeah. the blue. You're not actually going to see it. It's more it. of an accent light than anything else. That's what I see here. With the, no, we haven't, we haven't put it up yet. That lighting. Oh, no, this is just a representation no, a, of another facility. Oh, that's not what you're doing. No, yeah, no, 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 no. No, <laughs> no, no. It's, it's just basically a kind of, a, you know, the strip LED uh, lights. It's in a, a three-inch cove. And, and I think you have, uh, do you have a, 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 you don't have a, so it's open below. That's, yeah, it's open yeah. below. If you literally stand under the canopy and look up, you will see it. But yeah. driving down the road, you will yeah. not see okay. that road. Are you, are you changing the, are you taking the canopy completely down and nope. reinforcing No, no, it's, 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 it's basically just, just graphics. Just facially. Mm -hmm. Mike, it's just graphics. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, okay. and with the sign the, and the uh, um, uh, the the uh, LED the is also at the front of the uh, um, the three inch uh, by three inch uh, um, um, light 
enclosure so that you'll never really see it from afar. It's, okay. so as, she, as she said, as you, go, you have to go underneath it to look at it. Right. So it's what I'm gathering cool. is the reason why you're here is because of the canopy being changed. Yes. Any of the signage, I believe you'd need to go in front of the sign and awning board. Okay, so then everything on my application shouldn't have come here to begin with. I, again, you're changing the canopy because you're putting the colors changing, right? So then I'm really only here for the canopy with them because the well, me, apertures. So let me, yeah. So let me ask you. So now you're also you're putting the uh, um, uh, the synergy branding on the actual apertures. Yes. Right. So um, that also has signage on it. So in other words, she's putting these. Uh, the two, the pictures you were just looking at. Yeah. Um, and, then, and that's what mobile is doing on all their gas station right now. They're putting the Synergy um, uh, logo. Uh, and it's basically a graphic pat. It's not a graphic. It's actually a, kind of a, a triangular piece that uh, goes over the. Uh, it's the a, it's yeah, called yeah, yeah. a truss support. It's, I, look, it's they, like did, they did it on 22. I know exactly what it is. They did it on the next municipality down the street from us. So basically, I mean, it's, it's prefabricated. They're going to bolt it down to the floor and, and goes over uh, it goes over the actual um, it's like gasoline. like a sleeve. It goes right on. Mm -hmm. yeah. It literally slides right over yeah. the, the truss. Right. So with that, in essence, that's also still cons because the only function really is it's signage, right? Signage and is it also a trash can? No. No, it's just signage. So it's just signage. So it sounds like it has to go in front of the signage owning board, right? Signage board. Technically, I'm at the wrong board meeting. Or it's okay. It's a pleasure meeting as well. It's all right. Wrong board meeting. No, you can listen. Turn back to Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to switch keys or something. What are we doing? No. Um, Is your car nicer than mine? Probably. But I have a <laughs> kidding, question. Kidding. Did, who did you get clarification actually. that you had to go in front of the planning board for? Um, a woman named Marianne sent okay. me the whole package. So let let's go. Let me take a let me talk to them and to see why you were sent it up front. They must know something that I don't know. Okay. Okay. At minimum, you have to go to the signage. We uh, were originally supposed to be on the October board at 2.30 or something, and then she said that we couldn't, we weren't on that one because I didn't get all the paperwork in, and then she said, we'll see you on the 19th at the meeting. Was there a meeting at 2.30 today? Because I clarified the time twice with her. No, but we got your, we got your package, so, that, so she sent you to us for some reason. I want to get clarification yeah. on that. All right. I We're sorry about that. Um, all right, so. Yeah, oh, lovely town. Thank you. Uh, I'm very familiar with East Chester. <laughs> Go oh, right down the hutch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're hitting all the mobile uh, gas stations. Yeah, Good for you. Pretty much every one. Exactly. Good for you. Um, okay, so hopefully we'll figure this out, and if you have to come back to us, I'm sure you'll see you next month. Okay, and that's the December meeting. You Correct. Started. Right. So, Mike, tomorrow you'll just take our information, so we have some. Well, I'm sure Mayor has your information, correct? Yes. Okay, she so she'll get in stuff. touch with you. Again, the only reason why I think that, that you are in front of them is because you're changing. I'm changing the actual the fascia facade. of the canopy. Correct, and that, I think, would have triggered the, these guys. But they'll leave the public hearing open if they have any questions for you in regards to the color changes and stuff like that. Other than that, clarification from Yeah, because she even sent me this. I asked her, you know, what application I needed, and I sent the, build, the regular sign in building and she said no no you need this one she emailed me the ordinance the application the agenda everything i needed to hand in okay. so so i think it's because again because you, you're changing the facade of the building okay okay all right do you need me to sign anything other than the paper that i signed when i was here no 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 not at all so we're good yes all right, all right. Something. you do as well well, can I, can I just say something? Yeah. So it's not a complete waste. I am part of the signage and awning. Okay. So I would recommend when you come, maybe a larger. Yeah. A larger okay, yeah. yeah. Yes. Because we're very visual when we're okay. looking at things. So. Okay. I'm, I'm getting familiar with the different municipalities. Some want me to bring something, some don't. All right. So. When's your next meeting? Was it, uh, did you have the meeting November? This one was canceled. When was it though? Uh, All right. All right. Hopefully, we'll get this straight now for you tomorrow. Call, call uh, uh, Marianne and Mike. And uh, all right. Sure. Uh, yes. Okay. So at this point, I'd like to make a motion to open a public hearing. Can I have a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So is anyone here to speak on this application? Since there's no one else here, I'd like to make a motion to keep the public hearing open. So moved. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. We'll see you, you hopefully next month. You too. Bye bye. Since we have no more business, I'll make a motion to close the uh, meeting. Can I have a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. 
Good night, everyone. <laughs>